welcome back to another makeup lesson. Today we're going to create a classic party look. This is for so many different occasions and it's really easy to create as well. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that this video is sponsored by Audible, a leading provider in premium audiobooks as well as podcasts, new shows, original series, and lots more. And you can start listening today with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com slash the makeup chair or text the makeup chair to 500 500, which is really cool, but only works in the US, but check it out. I am currently listening to my girl Melanie Murphy's book, Fully Functioning Human Almost. I adore her as a person and she's a fellow Irish YouTuber. So I highly recommend listening to Melanie narrate her own book. It's brilliant. It's witty. It's full of honesty and just general loveliness that is Melanie Murphy. I'm new to Audible myself. I just started listening in the car, but I find when I listen when I'm doing my makeup, it really relaxes me, but it also inspires me at the same time. So give it a try. I have the link in the description box. Go to audible.com slash the makeup chair or text the makeup chair to 500 500. Now with that said, and my audiobook playing in the background, let's get started. So as with every look that we create, we always want to start off with a clean base and to do that you want to use a primer. So you can either mix your primer with your concealer or you can use a tinted primer. This one by Urban Decay, it's a classic, it's one of my absolute favorites, it's my kind of go-to. Basically all you want to do is just apply this all over the lid, it will create a blank canvas for us to work on, disguise any discoloration, while also helping your eyeshadows last longer because it gives them something to hold on to, which is a really important part. Now let's recap on parts of the eye because I always get asked about this. So I like to split the eye into three sections. The lid, the crease area, this is where the lid creases into the eye shape, and then the brow bone, which is technically not the brow bone, it's just underneath the brows. I then like to split the lid into three sections as well. So we have an inner, a middle, and an outer. And then you have your three liner areas. So we have your waterline, which is the lower part that you can see. We have the tight line or the upper waterline, which is underneath. And then we also have your lash line, which is that line across right by your lashes. And these are the kind of main areas that you apply liner. To create any eye makeup look, I usually use about four different eyeshadows. A highlight, a contour, and a mid-tone. Your mid-tone is basically in between your light and your dark. And then I also have a fade shade. The fade shade is that bright orange. Don't get scared. It's okay. We're only going to apply a very small amount of it, but it does make a big difference and I'll explain why in a bit. I've also added in two other things, a metallic eyeshadow and a glitter. Now for brushes, you really only need like two or three. A blending brush and a pencil brush. Now I would recommend having actually two blending brushes, but that's optional. One for applying, one for blending, just so you don't muddy up your look. And then also a flat brush. This is for cutting the crease. You don't plan on cutting your crease. You can always use your fingertips for what we're gonna do later. So there's all your tools. Now let's start applying. So we're gonna start off with our mid-tone and we're gonna use our blending brush. You always wanna make sure you're using your blending brush for your mid-tone to create that really soft effect. Now a lot of people refer to this as a transition shade, totally fine. I call it mid-tone because it's a middle tone, but it's totally up to you. You're going to blend this over and back and slowly build this up because your lid's going to be a little tacky. If you go in with too much eyeshadow to begin with, it's just going to grab hold of certain areas and not blend. You also want to hold your brush in the center of the handle and keep it at about eye level, so a little higher than normal, and sweep this over and back in the crease. Don't worry if you get a little bit of this on the lid because we will be cutting the crease. In fact, I actually kind of want you to get it onto the lid. And I also want you to get it on the outer third of the lid especially. This is going to work as a base for our contour. Once you slowly build this up, you should get a look that looks like this. Don't worry if it looks kind of muddy on the lid. That's totally fine. Just make sure that blend upwards towards the brow bone is nice and smooth. Your contour is next and this should be at least one shade darker than your skin tone. You're going to apply this with the smaller of the brushes that we've been using and I want you to tap this. So literally hold a brush right in the center to get maximum control and just tap this on that outer edge. So the outer third of the lid. Then what I want you to do is to create a cut crease line. So I want you to raise your eyebrow and I want you to look down in a mirror and tap this along the edge where we're going to cut the crease. So don't blend this up too far because we don't want to get this contour into the crease area. We want to keep it nice and low. Your mid-tone is always higher. So just apply this almost like you're attempting to hit the crease line. Then take your clean blending brush 
holding it right down the end of the brush, sweep this over and back just to soften out any harsh lines. So this is just gonna basically deepen the crease and just apply a little bit more of a depth look so when we cut the crease, it's gonna look even sharper. Okay, now we're gonna cut the crease. So you're gonna take your concealer brush with a little bit of concealer on it and I want you to really squash this down so it's nice and flat. I want it to look flat the whole time you're applying it as well. If it starts to kind of move, and kind of spread out as you're applying it, squash it back down again. And you can do this between your fingertips or onto a palette or the back of your hand. I also like to keep my mirror handy just so that I can really concentrate on what I'm doing. So just follow the natural shape or create the illusion of a shape of a lid. And you can rest your pinky on your cheek for support. And what I do is I barely touch the skin as I go around the edges and then pull it downwards across the lid. I like to raise my eyebrow because it kind of elongate your eye. If you find that your eyebrow doesn't support your lid shape, you can always use your finger on the outer edge to kind of create more of a tight effect. We're gonna move on to now applying our highlighter using that same brush and we're gonna go over everything that we've already cut. So you're basically gonna create kind of a sharper effect, a brighter effect, and your highlighter is gonna go on much nicer. I'm also gonna take this highlighter just underneath the brow bone as well, but I never like to have a really sharp brow bone I like to then take my fingertip and just kind of wipe away the excess. So now we have a divide between that inner corner and the outer corner. So what we want to do is to create a fade. So we're going to use our fade shade. You can take a little bit of this orange or yellow or even a pink would work. Take it on a blending brush and just apply this right where the two of them meet. And you can also blend this into the crease as well. At least that's my take on a fade shade. I don't think anybody else knows what it is except for me and you guys but it's awesome. So here's a look that you can basically complete at this stage, but let's just add to it to give it more of like a fun party look. We're gonna apply that beautiful shimmering coppery shade with a damp brush, gonna intensify it a little bit more. And we're gonna apply it over everything that we've already applied, starting in the middle of the lid and then blending outwards and inwards. And basically this is gonna go over everything that we've applied and create slightly different tones. We can also apply the glitter with that same brush just to add a little bit of fun. Next we're gonna go in with liner. Don't panic. All we're gonna do is just run along the lash line. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy, no wing. And if you haven't seen it already, I did an in-depth video on how to apply basic liner. I'm also gonna apply lots and lots of mascara. Don't skip this step, it's really important. And if you're not a big fan of applying falsies, which I will be applying, you can always just layer lots of layers of mascara. Kinda does the same thing. And I also like to curl my lashes after everything dries out it kind of creates the illusion that you're wearing falsies, but I will be applying them. Now that the falsies are on, we are ready to move on to the next step. So for the next step, I'm gonna take an angled brush and a little bit of black eyeshadow and push this right underneath those lashes. I've already applied lower lash mascara already, so we're basically just creating the illusion of a deeper effect. We're then gonna take a little bit of that brown and just run this along the edge as well. This will create a softer effect so it's not just harsh black. And I also then take my pinky and I just kind of rub everything in. This just softens out any harsh lines. And you can also take that fade shade if you wanted and work around the edge too. And there you go. That is the finished look. I hope that you guys will check this one out. Super easy, fun, and works on so many different people. You can even swap out that copper shade for silver or gold use cool tones or worn tones, and just change it up for whatever way that you like. Hope that you guys enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next one.